Uh, we are just so excited to be doing this. This is a very unusual project um, that came out of watching Shark Tank. Uh, I, I, mis I mistakenly watched it one day, and I kept thinking it would be cool if we could do that for nonprofits, but much nicer. <laughs> I've been uh, executive director, senior VP, uh, a VP, a chief development officer for nonprofits um, for the last 15 years. And I don't know how many of you are opening your nonprofit and plan on being the executive director, president, CEO, top gun, big mucky muck. <laughs> but if you haven't been in sales, I can tell you right now that half of your time will be spent fundraising. That's industry average, okay? And you need persuasive communication skills, and fundraising is sales. And these, these two minute speeches, uh, not to be confused, we're talking outside with an elevator speech. To be able to get to the point, connect with your prospect, whether or not you know they're a prospect, within two minutes or less, is, is going to be vital uh, to the success of a nonprofit. <laughs> As I tell all, all my nonprofit clients, nonprofit is a tax status, not a business model. You need more income than expense, or you just used to be a nonprofit. And selling with these little pitches when you have the opportunity is, is going to mean a, a, the difference for some of you a money message and manpower, or hey, I tried this once and it didn't work out. Why pitch masters and why did I select these specific people? Pitch masters, I think, uh, are a, uh, an, an asset that we don't often use. We don't get a chance often to go to someone and say, hey, can you just hear me out, just listen to my presentation and give me some real good constructive tips. Usually we're too busy doing day-to-day -day operations. We're too busy just trying to get people involved, to get more volunteers, to get more funding. And so I'm hoping that you all will take, um, take you know, just take advantage of today. So, so my, my, my company, we do a lot of work with individuals and businesses on brand and, and messaging and marketing. I can tell you that the two minutes that you guys are trying to work through and have been working through, is probably one of the hardest things to do. Mm -hmm. To try and encapsulate your cause and what's behind it and why it's important to the people that you're going to meet is incredibly tough to do. Here's what makes it easier though. There's a framework for doing this stuff. There's actually a formula for doing a pitch. And once you understand the formula, and my team understand, they got the formula. Um, <laughs> it, is, it will become much, much easier, right? It will become much, much easier. And, um, you know, the people that you're going to speak to, your goal, your, your absolute goal in this two minutes is, is to have them go, tell me more. That's what we're aiming for. Just tell me more. Right? No, seal the deal, just tell me more. Uh, your pitch master will give you two minutes, t each of you two minutes time to give your pitch. He'll stop after each pitch and spend a few minutes just telling you where you might tweak it. Go to the next pitch, listen, tell them where to, where to tweak. The same thing, you'll go around and you can start working on your own pitch as soon as you talk to the pitch master. Start taking notes, look at how you might revisit or revamp or reform what you've got. I don't think your pitches are gonna be awful. I just think that it's a great opportunity to see where you can make it better. Um, uh, the uh, pitch masters, uh, at some point you will have a break uh, when all the pitches are, are completed and we've given you enough time to work on it. You can take a break and you'll come back with your pitches. Uh, we'll redo them. I'll ring the bell to get you back all at your tables. And uh, at that point, they'll listen to your second pitch, see where you've, where you've improved and how you can continue to improve. Uh, with nonprofits, kind of stemming off the previous two, you're selling no matter what. You're going to be spending plenty of time selling, but you're not selling a new pair of shoes, you're not selling pens, you're not selling shirts, you're selling emotions, you're selling results. Um, and that's different than what a lot of people try to sell. You could, you know, working at a bank, I work for Main Street Bank, and we talk about our products and services and how convenience factors in the cost of everything, because that's what you think about when you think of a bank. Let me think of convenience, let me think of my cost. But when you're selling about your nonprofit and what you do, it's really about how does it affect that person. And I was, I loved my group, and from what I could hear, overhear from other people talking too, just, how people were trying to drive 
that attachment, that um, how does it affect me, the individual, my community, um, and that's what really gets people. That's what's really going to get people to want to donate their time, donate their money, um, give back, help your cause uh, achieve their goals by making it personal. Okay, the five things you really need to know to make sure that your pitch is working, and consider this as you speak. Be sure to be concrete. <laughs> The, uh, the pitch master does want to hear a lot of fuzz. They want to hear concrete. You need to be articulate and brief. Remember, you only have two minutes. I kind of relate it to dating. You want to make sure that the oh. yeah. You want to make sure that the person gets the first flash that makes them really want to see you again. You want to provoke interest. You want something that's memorable. Uh, make it real to the person that you're talking to. It doesn't have to be a long story. It can be that Bobby, who could not, who kept falling asleep in class, is now getting better grades because your program feeds him a breakfast every morning. Uh, show how you are different. Remember, and somebody said use the word competition, and we always think that that doesn't apply to nonprofits. Well, a lot of us are in competition with one another for grants, for for uh, vendors that provide us uh, pro bono service or for in kind service. Um, you have to show how you're different. Provide dynamic data, data that makes somebody alert. I was shocked to find out that, over, and this is the data that got me about Final Salute, over half the homeless veterans in the United States are single mothers. That just like blew me away. And that's what you want. You want something that, that will blow someone away. Show that you know the partner potentiality of the person you're meeting with. That requires research up front. But for the sake of this practice, you're going to assume that your pitch master is the person who already has potentiality with you. But when you go outside of here, make sure that you know that that person is really the, the right potential partner for you. So for me, it's all about when you, when you, you know, I think Paul put it well, you're, you're, you're selling yourselves and you're selling your cause when you walk in. It's a matter of understanding who your audience is going to be. And it's finding a, finding a strategy that makes sense for that particular person. So. What you may do in a two-minute presentation to one group is going to be maybe different than the next group you talk to. Uh, the pitch masters will select the top three. The top three will come to this podium and give their pitch to the entire group. And who you're pitching to, they're people just like you, and and taking that intimidation factor out of it, and and just knowing that we are all people, and they may be a, an uber rich, super important CEO, whatever but they're still just a person. And um, so thinking about who you're talking to in terms like that may make you a little bit more comfortable and less intimidated. The three people will give their presentation and the pitch masters will select uh, one out of those three. The top a person will win a cash award and then the other two will get a, certificate, a gift certificates for an hour <coughs> consultation, which is really of great value considering that that person is going to sit with you in your office or maybe at OP3 and provide them with a, 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 a full hour of nobody but you. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you to ask for your partnership with We Care to Share Chantal, a group changing lives in rural Haiti. Let me assure you first that we are unique. 100% of your support dollars will go directly to assisting the poor villagers of Chantal and Canal, Haiti. We are the most effective use of your charity dollars, helping the very poorest of the poor. Unlike many groups, we are 100% volunteer. We have no paid staff. All team members pay all their expenses, and our overhead is covered through donations. Our mission is to help the villagers become self-sufficient with goals set by the community in the past three years with partnerships with Rotary Clubs and Literacy Volunteers of Warrington and assistance from Brothers Brother Foundation, we've achieved tremendous progress. 7,000 school students now have pure drinking water. Three schools with 2,000 students have computers to assist them with life-altering skills, and four more are in line this year. There are now modern dinner equipment and tools in a small dispensary serving a quarter of a million people. And storage freezers protect vaccines for 30 adjacent villages for their vaccination programs. <laughs> this spring, through a partnership with 10 Rotary Clubs in Northern Virginia, a solar power array will bring electricity to Canal, Haiti, 
for the first time. Our partners have found that we've become known as part of their signature ID for caring and involvement and giving back to the world. There are many ways you can partner with us with infrastructure projects in sanitation, medical care, and education. Which would you like to learn about that would be most interesting to your company? Excellent. How would you like to see a great play? How would you like to see a great play featuring actors who have appeared at the Kennedy Center or even on Broadway? Now, what if I told you I could give you that great play, save you a couple of hours driving to and from the theater, a couple hundred, hundred dollars off of your ticket, and I throw in free parking? Next Stop Theater Company gives you that. We believe that the Dulles Corridor, one of the fastest growing communities in the entire DC region, needs, wants, and deserves to be a home for great theater. Theater is art. It entertains us, it challenges us, it inspires us. But theater is also an event. It connects people by bringing a live audience together to watch live actors perform stories about what it means to be alive. <laughs> and theater is a powerful educational tool. It can teach students about self-confidence, self-expression, collaboration. Theater is even an economic driver. It creates jobs and supports many more by driving patrons to local restaurants, retail stores, and hotels. Great theater is a hallmark of a great community. The DC area actually has one of the largest and most vibrant theater communities in the entire country and is home to over 90 professional theater companies. But here's the thing, within this vast, bustling theater scene, only one professional theater company is dedicated to serving the Dulles Corridor. With your support, Next Stop Theater is bringing great theater right here to the Dulles Corridor and proving that this really is a great community with plenty of free parking. <laughs> oh, still morning. Good morning. My name is Derwin Overton. I'm the executive director of a community nonprofit named OAR. OAR stands for Opportunities, Alternatives, and Resources. We provide services for individuals who have been incarcerated and that are returning back into our community that need assistance in becoming self-sufficient in our community. I'd like to point out a couple of things for you. First, there's over two million individuals incarcerated in the United States at this time. And for each individual incarcerated, there's 2.5 children impacted. So that means we have 5 million children that are lacking the impact and the needs and the support from their parents and supporting them in the community. At OAR, we have a budget of about $1.4 million, a staff of about 20 individuals. And our mission is to help individuals return back from incarceration. We pride ourselves on being a part of the community safety continuum. When individuals are incarcerated, they are go to court, they're arrested by the Fairfax County Police, they are then watched by the Sheriff's Department, and then they're released to our community. Without the necessary help and support to come into our community, they're probably going to do the same thing that they did previously that caused them to be incarcerated. OAR prides itself on reducing recidivism. Recidivism is reducing the return rate of individuals to incarceration. OAR does that providing employment support and services for individuals by helping them to get, keep, and maintain employment. This is also very important because if you're willing to partner with us, not only are you making an investment in OAR and the individual's lives, but also in the community itself. We pride our community on being safe and allowing us to do some of the things that we do and that we take for granted, and it's very important that we support the people that are returning back into the community. Another key term that I forgot to say more about was recidivism. OAR's recidivism rate is 7% compared to 60% nationally. It costs over $60,000 to incarcerate someone at the Fairfax County Adult Detention Center and over $24,000 to incarcerate somebody at a state prison. And it only costs $385 for us to serve each individual that we serve. I'm asking you to partner with us and make a donation with OAR to contribute to the safety continuum of our community so that the children, the five million children I was telling you about, will have an opportunity to live a better life and become self-sufficient and break the cycle of crime and not be repeat individuals of incarceration. Thank you.